the two other centers of a triangle are the centroid or the center of mass and the orthocenter. To construct the centroid, first you need to find um, the midpoints of each leg of the triangle. So I'll kind of just eyeball those in here. And the centroid is the point of concurrency of the medians of the triangle, and the medians connect a vertex to the opposite midpoint. Um, so here connect a vertex to the opposite midpoint, that's a median. And the medians are concurrent at the centroid. In physics, that's called the center of mass. It's the balancing point. So if you could balance that triangle on your finger at the centroid, then it would just sort of sit there. Uh, the centroid comes with sort of an interesting theorem. The centroid lies two-thirds along the way on the median from any vertex to the opposite midpoint. So for example, if we call this triangle ABC and the midpoints D, E, F, and let's just mark these to guarantee that those points are in fact midpoints. Okay, and let's call the centroid point G. Then the centroid theorem says that BG is two-thirds of BF. And that's true for any of the medians. So we can say that CG is two-thirds of CD. And AG is two-thirds of AE. Which means you know, if you're given that AE is 9 units, then AG is 6 and GE is 3, since the centroid lies 2 thirds of the way along the median from the vertex to the opposite midpoint. <clears throat> okay. And then the orthocenter is the last of the four centers of the triangle. And the orthocenter, <clears throat> actually I don't want this to be a right triangle. The orthocenter is made by constructing the altitudes. It's, it's found by constructing the altitudes so I'll call this triangle ABC. And an altitude is the line from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. So in our case here, there's perpendicular. And you can see that it, these three altitudes, as they're called, are concurrent. And in this case, they're concurrent inside the triangle. We'll call this point D, where D is the orthocenter. Now, it, it was inside this triangle because it's acute, but the orthocenter so, inside for acute triangle, it's actually outside for an obtuse triangle, and it's on the triangle for a right triangle. The centroid always lies inside, always, 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 because 
the medians start at a vertex, goes to the midpoint of the opposite side. There's no room for that to be outside the triangle. Uh, the orthocenter can exist outside the triangle. So let me show you an example of that. Let's just draw an obtuse one. So here's obtuse triangle ABC. And the perpendicular from B to AC is pretty easy. I mean, it's not so hard to imagine this perpendicular. I'm just going to extend this. Now, the perpendicular from point C to AB, well, that gets a little tougher. Uh, you can see that any angle inside the triangle that you draw from point C to AB is obtuse. So in fact, the altitude exists entirely outside the triangle. So if you extend the side AB, ah, now we can see where the perpendicular is. The perpendicular is like that. And that is going to be the orthocenter. That's going to be the orthocenter. And it lies outside the triangle. And the same has to happen here. I have to extend that. I have to extend the leg of CB and then drop the perpendicular. You can see that the orthocenter, in fact, lies outside the triangle for an obtuse triangle. For the right triangle, it's on the triangle and it's at the vertex of the right angle. Um, the orthocenter and the centroid and the circumcenter are, are three points that are actually collinear, and they're collinear on the Euler line, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and this also, the orthocenter also leads to something called the nine point circle. So uh, these things lead to the nine point circle in the Euler line, which are pretty interesting things. If you're interested in that, you should look it up. Um, so these are, so we have the centroid, the orthocenter, and we had the circumcenter and the incenter, and those are the four centers of the triangle.